Good morning everyone. So today I will be explaining you chapter 4 of history of class 8. The name of the chapter is Tribals, Dikus and the Vision of a Golden Age. In 1895, a man named Birsa was seen roaming in the forest and villages of Chota Nagpur in Jharkhand. People said that he had miraculous powers. He could cure all the diseases and even multiply grain. Birsa also himself declared that God had appointed him to save his people from trouble, free them from the slavery of Dikus. So children, Dikus were the outsiders. Soon, thousands began following Birsa, believing that he was God and he had come to solve all their problems. Birsa was born in a family of the Mundas, a tribal group that lived in the Chotanagpur. But his followers included other tribals of the region like Santhals and Orangs. The tribal societies were different from the other societies. These tribal societies did not have these sharp social divisions that were characteristic of the caste societies. All those who belonged to the same tribe thought of themselves as sharing common ties of kinship. So children, do you know how the tribal groups live? So the first one is, some of the tribals were jhum cultivators. Some of them practiced jhum cultivation which is also called as shifting cultivation. This was done on small patches of land, mostly in the forest. The cultivators cut the tree troughs to allow sunlight to reach the ground. They burnt the vegetation on the land to clear it for cultivation. They spread the ash to fertilize the soil. They scattered the seeds on the field instead of plowing the land and sowing the seeds. Once the crop was ready and harvested, they moved to another field. Now children, some of the tribals were also hunters and gatherers. So let me explain you this. In many regions, the tribal group lived by hunting animals and by gathering forest produce. These tribal people, they saw forest as essential for their survival. The cones were such a community living in the forest of Odisha. They regularly went out on collective hunts and then divided the meat among themselves. They ate fruits and roots which they collected from the forest and cooked food with the oil which were extracted from the seeds of sal and mahua. They used many forest shrubs and herbs for medicinal purposes and also sold these forest produce in the local markets. Some of the tribals also did odd jobs in the villages like carrying loads or building roads, while others labored in the fields of peasants and farmers. The tribal groups often needed to buy and sell in order to be able to get the goods that were not produced within their locality. So this led to their dependence on the traders and moneylenders. Some of the tribal groups lived by herding and rearing animals. They were pastoralists who moved with their herds of cattle or sheep according to their seasons. Even before the 19th century, many from within the tribal groups had begun settling down and cultivating their fields in one place year after year instead of moving from one place to another place. Now children, we will move to the another portion of the chapter which is forest laws and their impact. The life of the tribal groups was directly connected to the forest. Some of the forests were classified as reserved forests as they produced timber for the Britishers. In these forests, the people were not at all allowed to move freely, practice jhum cultivation or collect fruits and hunt animals. The colonial officials then came up with a solution. They decided that 
they would give the jhum cultivators small patches of land in the forest and allow them to cultivate these on the condition that those who lived in the villages would have to produce labor to the forest department and look after the forest many tribal groups reacted against the colonial forest laws they disobeyed the new rules continued with practices that were declared illegal and at times they also rose in open rebellion for example the songram sangma in 1906 in assam the forest satyagraha of 1930 in the central provinces from the late 19th century tea plantations started coming up and mining became an important industry the tribals were recruited in large numbers to work in the tea plantations of assam and in the coal mines of jharkhand they were recruited through the contractors who paid them miserably low wages and prevented them from returning home so i hope children you have understood how did the tribal people they earn their living now children let me explain you about the tribal leader named birsa munda so birsa munda was born in the mid 1870s he grew up around the forest of bohonda grazing sheep playing the flute and dancing in the local akhada birsa was deeply influenced by many ideas he came in touch with in his growing up years his movement was aimed at reforming the tribal society he urged the mundas to give up drinking liquor clean their villages and stop believing in witchcraft and sorcery in the year 1895 birsa urged his followers to recover their glorious past he talked of a golden age in the past that is satyug the age of truth in 1900 birsa died of cholera and the movement faded out so children i hope you understood the chapter very well if you have any doubt you can ask me thank you everyone